not to preach this message three times before I even got here. <laughs> I'm telling you, there's, the tide is turning here. Amen. What a great day to be a Christian. What a great day to be alive. Man, I'm telling you, I'm excited. Turn to Luke chapter eight, uh, 16. God put my glasses on and it was 6. Not eight. Title of this message is Seed or Talent. Verse one. Now, he was also saying to the disciples, there was a certain rich man who had a steward. And this steward was reported to him as squandering his possessions. 
And he called him and said to him, What is this I hear about you? Give an account of your stewardship, for you can no longer be steward. And the steward said to himself, What shall I do since my master is taking the stewardship away from me? I am not strong enough to dig. I'm ashamed to beg. I know what I shall do. So that when I am removed from the stewardship, they will receive me into their homes. And he summoned each one of his master's debtors. And he began saying to the first, how much do you owe my master? And he said, a hundred measure of oil. And he said to him, take your bill, sit down quickly and write 50. Then he said to another, and how much do you owe? He said, a hundred measures of wheat. He said to him, take your bill and write 80. And his master praised the unrighteous steward because he had acted shrewdly for the sons of this age are more shrewd in relation to their own kind than the sons of light. And I say to you, make friends for yourselves by means of the mammon of unrighteousness that when it fails, they may receive you into their eternal dwellings. He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. He who is unrighteous in a very little thing is unrighteous also in much. If therefore you have not been faithful in the use of unrighteous mammon, who will entrust the the true riches to you? And if you have not been faithful in the use of that which is another's, how will, who will give you that which is your own? No servant can serve two masters For either he will hate the one, love the other, or else he'll hold to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. Now, there is a lot to unpack here, but what we've been talking about is discipleship and counting the cost. And when you're talking about discipleship and counting the cost, you've got to count in the cost of stewardship. Because if you don't count the cost of stewardship, it's going to be tough to get along here. And Jesus makes the most astounding, relevant statement. And we've missed it as a church. He says, sometimes the sons of this world are smarter than the sons of light when it comes to dealing with being here and living present. See, sometimes we forget we have to live here in the present. And he, so he begins to talk about if we've got little, we've got to steward that little. Come on. But here's the problem. We don't understand stewardship and we don't understand discipleship. We don't understand the covenant. And what we have to realize is, is that when Jesus is talking, he's talking about a steward who was wrongly accused of stewarding. He was falsely accused of squandering. Come on. Let me tell you, there is a devil always pointing his finger at you, trying to talk, tell God you're squandering. Come on. They ain't doing nothing with what you've... Come on. They're not doing anything with the blood or the body. Come on. The seed that you put... They're not doing nothing with it. The talent, the money, they're not doing what... Come on, you've always got an accuser trying to accuse you of squandering what God has entrusted to you. Amen. 
See, the cost is not the issue, remember. What matters is you count the cost. It's because that's what makes the impossible possible. See, you got to count the cost, but the cost ain't the issue. God can get to you. Man, Pastor Jerry preached a message one time. If God can get it through you, He'll get it to you. And I've never forgot that. Listen, His super on our natural, when the devourer comes, come on. When the ongoing expense, the devourer, the the thing that is consuming. See, there's always going to be an expense. There's always going to be something trying to consume your goods. You've got to tie it into the covenant of God so he can bless it to multiply it. Warning, this is not a tithing message. This is not a tithing message. This is a life lesson. These are life lessons that even the pastors in the church have been scared to address. Come on. Because we've got to the point where we hold to the one and not the other. You talk tithing and people get upset, it's because you're trusting mammon. You're not trusting God. And so we've got this, we cringe when somebody talks about tithing. Oh, this is just another tithing message. No, this is a covenant message. This is a life-changing message. Come on. See, walking by faith means that we will have to calculate living present on this earth right now. We're going to have to calculate the unreasonable Make your pucker strings tighten up. The unseen, but always hoping. Standing with our toes dangling over the edge. Come on. We're going to have to calculate these things that are unreasonable. It's an exciting life when you follow God. That the, what He has ordained for your life. To live it to its fullest. In an abundance. Nowhere in the Bible does God say you got to take a vow of poverty. Let me say that again. Nowhere in Scripture does God call us to take a vow of poverty. God doesn't work on poverty issues. He works on multiplication. Come on. There is a reason that it's called walking by faith. See, stewardship is why we count the cost because the enemy will always falsely accuse the stewards of God's grace. Caleb sent me a deal this morning, man. The sun was coming up and he had the picture of his truck, the background backed up, cows coming on, and you could see the whole sunset coming up this morning. And I, I don't know where he's at, but... It looked like New Mexico or somewhere. But he, and I was like, man, God's mercy and grace are new every day. He was like, it's these moments that, and it just, it come over him. See, God's mercies and graces are new every day. You just got to stop and go, Lord, I thank you for one more day. One more day. Come on. See, we have to learn to conduct and do business here. Knowing that we are just stewards of what God has entrusted to us as we pass through here. Come on, are y'all with me? We got to learn to live present on this earth. Luke 16, 10, what did it say? He who is faithful in a very little thing is faithful also in much. See, the word faithful is a fruit of the Spirit. Faithfulness. 
That's a fruit of the Spirit that we have to develop. And God develops that faithfulness with us. When we're faithful with the little, then He gives us more. Come on. Then He gives us more. If we learn to steward, if we learn to count the cost, He'll begin to develop. It'll begin to multiply. 2 Corinthians. Man, let me, let me tell you something. We're, fit, we're, we're going somewhere. See, Jesus always wanted us to be eternally minded, but He always wanted us to live in the present. Does that make sense? I can't say that enough. Living in the present here on earth today. 2 Corinthians 9 verse 10. Now he who supplies seed to the sower and bread for food will supply and multiply your seed for sowing and increase the harvest of your righteousness. You will be enriched in everything for all liberality, which through us is producing thanksgiving to God. For the ministry of this service is not only fully supplying the needs of the saints, but it also overflowing through many thanksgivings to God. Here God addresses our what and our why. God addresses, I will supply your what? Come on. And I'll even multiply that which I supply to you to sow. So that you can be generous. Come on. He said, I'll supply the seed. Listen, he's supplying the seed but we got to plant it. And then God multiplies it. Listen, <laughs> God supplies for the farmer and the hungry. Come on. He's working on both, he's working both ends, but there in the middle, we got to work. He said, I'll give you the seed, but you're going to have to cultivate it. Man, Wendy said something this morning. You know the only thing that grows that you don't plant and you don't cultivate? Weeds. You can go out there and till up a garden. Man, I got a garden. No, you're going to have weeds if that's all you do. You're going to have to tend you're going to have to cultivate. You're going to have to plant. What, just because you put the seed in the ground don't mean it's over. But we've done it for hundreds of years in America. We've come, sat down in the pew, and didn't do nothing. And the weeds grow. And the bugs come. And they begin to devour and they begin, come on. Weed ain't going to do nothing but rob your plants from bearing fruit. It's an ongoing process all year long. All year long. It's a never ending quit. We got to work because it's happening whether you like it or not. You're either, it's either going to be something fruit and edible or it's going to be weeds. Come on, man. That's why welfare has never worked. Welfare will never work because that's man's way of trying to do something good. Come on, man. Y'all, anybody in here with me? If you're a taxpayer, you should have been. Yeah. See, welfare don't work. Entitlement don't work. You ain't entitled to nothing. Everything ain't fair. 
Yeah, I said that. Not everybody's going to get a trophy. But let me tell you something. I'm going to run like I am going to get one. I'm going to train like I am going to win. Come on. And I'm going to do my part and then God put His super on my natural. Because it doesn't matter all the storms, all the hurt, all the broke bones, everything never stopped me from doing, come on, what God's called me to do. Man, come on now. He supplies seed to the sower, but we got to do something with it. See, God will supply our what? We have to plant it. We have to steward it, and He multiplies it. Come on. God is always working on our character to make sure we have it, and it doesn't have us. Always. That's always the issue. God is working on us to make sure we're not getting our focus on the treasure. Come on. He'll always check us. Always. That'll never stop. I'm just telling you, I wish it would sometimes, but it, it, it just doesn't. I, I wish I could say that was... But let me tell you something. Every time he checks it, that's when it's going to multiply. Trust me. Every time your what gets, you get busy in your what and you ain't been spending time at the feet, he's going to check your what to make sure you got your eyes on the right thing and not the wrong thing. And then once, he re- once, once you get back to those feet... Nothing else, nothing else will do. I just want you. Come on. When you get back to that place, he says, all right, now let's, let, let's go to the next level. That word enriched. Listen, this is stuff that's, that's God's not mad at you. God's not mad at you and God's not just leaving you to your own. There's things set in motion that you just have to tap into. Come on. Look in Genesis chapter 1. That word enriched means to make wealthy, possession, and abundance. Come on, that's... Yeah, woohoo. And that's not for a selfish thing. Get, get over that. I, I don't want money so I can go buy a Cadillac or a Prius or a, what's that, Tesla? Tesla. I, 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 I can't do nothing with none of that. I can't haul nothing in a Cadillac or a, a Tesla. I, I can't do that. I'm stuck in driving my truck. Okay? That's not what this is about. This is about a natural law that has been set in motion. Genesis chapter 1, verse 11. Then God said, very important, write that down. God said, let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit after their kind with seed in them on the earth, and it was so. Everybody say it was so. It was so. That, that, that wasn't, well, maybe it will work, right? No, it was so. I like that part. It was so. And the earth brought forth vegetation, plants yielding seed after their kind, and trees bearing fruit with seed in them after their kind. That that right there could stop a lot of confusion in our world. God saw that it was good. Now, Clay said something to me the other day. We was at the ball field. And and y'all just have to know, If you say something that is like a rock dropping in my spirit, 
If I tune you out the rest of the conversation, it's because what I'm not being rude. I, and I know Clay thought, he ain't hearing a word I'm saying. No, I heard, my spirit heard what you said and my spirit is going... Clay was talking about, and you may not, Clay, you'll remember. Clay said, there is a law that's in the ground that when you put a seed in it, it is a law. When God said, come on, you strip it bare, do whatever you want, something's fixing to grow back. Because there is a law that has been spoken into the ground that if you plant it and you cultivate it, it's going to grow. It's a law. Why? Because God said. And you begin to read in Genesis and you're going to see where God made, God created, God said, it was so and it was good. Come on. You, you can even solve the age-old question of the chicken or the egg in there if you'll just read Genesis chapter 1. The chicken. You're sitting there going, oh, well, well no, the chicken. God said, and it was. So there, God in creation began to set law and order. Man, you got to hear this. Law and order. If you break the law, what happens? You go to jail. You lose your rights. That's the way it's supposed to be. Now, we've got a whole party that you break the law and you, you're back out breaking the law again. But I'm just telling you, right, this ain't a political preaching either. It's just, that's just common sense. You can't break the law and still have rights. And they're wanting people who break the law to be able to vote in jail. No, no, no. You're in jail. You broke the law. You can't be trusted to vote. Common sense. Man tries to usurp. Is that the right word? <laughs> the law and order of God, it don't work. That's why welfare don't work. That's why everything's fair. Everybody gets a trophy. Doesn't work. You can't usurp the law of God. That he's already set in motion. Come on. It's a law. God spoke it to the ground and the ground obeys. Even the ground obeys. Even the tides of the ocean obey the law that God said you'll only go this far. Come on, man. God established that law in that order. On this earth, everything in it, everything underneath it, He established. And listen, in an age where our culture is telling us to ignore the simplest rules and laws of nature, we have to understand that these laws can they they can't be ignored or they can't be changed. Listen, you don't have to like gravity. You don't even have to understand gravity. But there ain't nothing you can make that come on. You can't change it. Man has learned how to fly through it, but you forget to fill that tank up, it's fixing to kick back in. Huh? 
You can ignore gravity only for a little bit. But what goes up is going to come down. It's the same way with tying yourself to the covenant of God. Right? A person doesn't have to like them, but you can't, you're not going to ignore it and you ain't going to change it. Because God said, God made, and God called it and said it was good. Just nothing you're going to do about it. See, we don't have to understand it, but we will participate in it. Right? You, you could change the name. You could change the name of gravity, but it's still gravity. You can, <laughs> you can get mad and cuss the sun for coming up and brighten your eyes. But let me tell you something. Every morning, it's coming up. You don't have to like those things. But you're not going to ignore them. Because what God has set in motion, we have to come in alignment with it. And when we come in alignment with it, then we can use it and put, come on. God, God can bless what we can come in alignment with. See, that's what was so amazing about the steward that was accused of being unrighteous. Wait, wait a minute. Then he got in alignment. He said, okay, wait a minute. Here's what we're going to do. And the next thing you know, righteous steward. Man, you acted more wisely than anybody. Come on. Look in Isaiah chapter 55. Verse 2, why do you spend money for what is not bread and your wages for what does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me. Eat what is good and delight yourself in abundance. Incline your ear and come to me. Listen that you may live and I will make an everlasting covenant with you. According to the faithful mercies shown to David. Come on. He said, I'll make a covenant with you. He said, if you'll come to me, he said, I'm going to show you. See, there's an everlasting covenant here that God established. What he starts, he will finish. See, that's what Tracy was talking about. What God started, he'll finish. Look in verse 10. I tell you what, look at verse 8. Could God, we could go all the way back to 6. But for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your ways my ways, declares the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return there without watering the earth, and making it bare and sprout, and furnishing seed to the sower, and bread to the eater. Two different things. There's that farmer, and there's that hungry guy again. Come on. So shall my word be, which goes forth from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty. In other words, I said it, I created, I made it, it was so, it was good. God's always reminding us He made it, He created it, come on, He spoke it, and He says it's good. And it was so. I've got a covenant. If you'll change, do things my way, quit thinking about doing them your way, come on. See, man gets in trouble when we think we can do it our way. Our ways are flawed If we don't want what we do to be a waste, then we need to get in line with the kingdom of God. Because he says, my word 
the principles and the promises that I put in place, if you'll get in alignment with them, the same mercies that I shown David, I'll show you too. That same covenant to bless, I'll bless you. Because there is a principle that is at play. There is law and there is order at work and we have to get in alignment with it. Come on. We just have to understand what's seed and what's to eat. <laughs> if you ain't got but one seed of wheat, don't eat it. Don't eat it. You can't multiply it if it, come on. I remember we had $20 left to our name. And Wendy said, the Lord showed me this lady coming out of Brookshire Brothers with a hat on, with a flower, and I'm to give her this 20 bucks. I mean, we're, we, don't, we don't even have a house. We're living with mom and daddy and our two boys. And the, and the, and the, and the bank's trying to find our truck to repo it. 20 bucks is what we had. Well, we're broke. <laughs> Why prolong the inevitable? <laughs> I mean, what are we going to do? Buy a Snickers and a Coke? I, I don't, you know, you better go give it. Wendy pulls up to Brookshire Brothers and out of the store comes a little black lady with a hat and a flower on it. Ma'am, this is for you. And she just left a Bible study. What, seem, what may seem foolish. Well, that's not being a good steward, just giving away your last $20. No, we didn't give it away. We sowed it. That's why I love that woman. <laughs> Working on one. He even made the ground that she sowed it in good. <laughs> Come on, man. You leave this church, you just take a drive down that road back to my house, make the circle, and leave. Don't forget your kids. <laughs> yeah, and you can see that $20. You look out in that pasture full of bulls and you'll see the first bull we sowed. You look at all those trailers and you'll see the trucks and the trailers, all that sowing. When people said, say, you better sell. No, we didn't, I didn't sell that trailer. I so, sold that trailer. Come on. It's a natural process that happens. When you get and you put, when you plant, come on. And you steward and you cultivate, and you steward, and you cultivate. Even when you've had crop failure, even when storms come and knock all the plants down, even when a thief comes in and the hogs come in and root it up, what do you do? You keep planting, you keep plowing, and you keep cultivating because you will reap a harvest. It is a law and it is set in stone and been established because God said, God made, God created, it was so, and it is good. Because what God spoke will not return void. You just have to get in alignment with it. Because it is a law, 
And it is the order that God multiplies that seed. Come on, man. It all started. That's where it started. Even his granddaddy, Hamp. I remember growing up hearing stories of Hamp praying. Daddy said, I always remember Hamp's prayers. The reason she got me is because I seen her reading her Bible like at six, at seven at night. Who does that? Does he have me for a kid? <laughs> <laughs> I remember getting up at 4.30 in the morning one morning and Mama's already over there underneath the light at the kitchen table with her Bible open praying for me and Daddy. <laughs> and Wendy... Come on. Multiplying. Plowing and cultivating. Never give up. You ladies that got husbands that you're believing and praying for, you say, well, I don't, I don't work and I don't get... Listen, God, God's... Listen, His, he, he, he is sanctified because of you. You keep praying, you keep believing, and what little you get, you sow, God will multiply it. Come on, are y'all with me in here? It's the only place where God says, test me in this and see now. Why can God say that? Why can God say that? Why, why can God be so assured that He says, test me in this? Because he already established it, the law and the order of it, and he says, it'll happen. Yeah. Just like when you put a seed in the ground, it's going to spring up. Come on. I don't care if you're picking pennies up in the parking lot. You pick those pennies up, when you get ten of them, you tithe one. And teach your children to do the same. Oh. Oh. Teach your children, period. <laughs> teach them these law in this order that God has. And just watch Him go, man. There's an everlasting covenant here that God established. He starts it whether you're a part of it or someone else has to do it. It's always out there. God's Word never returns void. There is a mantle and an anointing laying out there that somebody set aside and is, God is waiting for somebody to pick it up. Come on. Elijah throwed his mantle on Elisha and Elisha, and, and Elisha said, Wait! I, let me sacrifice, let me sow, let me do this, and then I'll come follow. He said, what did I do to you? Once he got into alignment, it woke up an anointing on the inside of him that he would carry on after Elijah was gone. He did twice. He had a double portion because he got in line. Come on. Who wants a double a portion of what God has done in mine and Wendy's life? Who wants a double a portion of what you've done in Kent's life? Who wants a double a... Come on. See, if you've been around here any length of time, you know we're about assignment and we're about occupying. Right? Right? See, here we see principles of a farmer and a hungry and the hungry. His word will accomplish the assignment. 
We have to come into alignment with what He has ordained. Come on. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Come on. Deuteronomy 28 verse 1 real quick. You'll have to go back and read the whole thing, but we're going to look in verse 1 and 2. Now it shall be. Man, I love that part right there. Now it shall be. Come on, when you're speaking to something you've put in the ground, now it shall be. Come on, if you're believing God for something, now it shall be. Come on. Now it shall be. I love that part. Now it shall be, if you will diligently obey the Lord your God, in other words, that's coming into alignment, being careful to do all His commandments which I command you today, the Lord your God will set you high. Oh, wait, you don't want us broke, disgusted, and busted? No, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations on the earth. Come on, this ain't a poverty mentality gospel. God wants His people to be blessed. And what makes me more mad than a kamikaze pilot, let me put it that way. It just unearths me when ministries are blessed. Well, they're just preaching that old prosperity gospel. Okay, be broke. That's fine. You just do that. God wants us high. High above. Not just a little bit. <laughs> Come on, get a revelation of that. Just get a revelation of that. High above. High. Man, when you're high above, man, you can see some stuff. Come on. And all these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you if you will obey the Lord your God. Now you can go back and I encourage you, if you have never read Deuteronomy 28, you are way behind. You got to read Deuteronomy 28. Oh, and just a sidebar. You know the two mountains? See, God had, had them s standing in between two mountains, Ebal and Gabe, Gabe. I can't remember the other one. It's one of them names. But on Ebal, all the curses of not doing what God said was read. On this mountain, all the blessings was read and the people got to pass between them. You know what archaeologists found? For all the Bible people that don't believe the Bible's real, they found, because that, people that, that they say that back in Moses' day, they didn't even know how to write. Well, what, here's what they found. They found a lead tablet and the curses were all written on Mount Ebal. Huh. Well, it's just sad note. Look in verse 10. So all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they shall be afraid of you and the Lord will make you abound in prosperity in the offspring of your body, and in the offspring of your beast, and in the produce of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give you. The Lord, look here, verse 12, the Lord will open for you His good storehouses, the heavens, to give rain to your land in the season, and to bless all the work of your hand. All the work. Not just sitting around doing nothing. Come on. 
He'll bless all the work of your hand. And you will lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. The Lord will make you the head, not the tail. And you only shall be above, and you shall not be underneath, if you will listen to the command. Look, just you can keep reading. He says, I'll cause it to happen. He said, I'll open my storehouses. Now here's what I want you to understand. He said, my storehouses. Jesus said, lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth nor either rust or thief can destroy it, right? See, man's way of being greedy and selfish will rot your seed. But when you <laughs> tap into the storehouse of God, it's a fresh seed. It's ready to germinate. Come on. See, when you store up here on earth, it can rot. The weevils get in. The thieves come and get. Come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? That good storehouse. Let, let, let me put it this way. What God are you coming into alignment with? Are you coming in alignment with the Creator God? that blesses and multiplies, creates, makes, says it's good, has already established the law and the covenant, or the God of self. Come on now. Man, Taylor talked about this, the crisis of selfishness that we're in here. See, none of this sounds like God's mad at us. It sounds like when we're faithful with little and we steward little with a vision for a lot. Come on. God can multiply it. See, that's why, man, this just in from ranch headquarters. That's why Joshua stood up at the end. And he said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Because that's where the abundance, the multiplication, the favor, come on, the seed, that's where my seed comes from. That's where my seed comes from. It comes from God. And when I'm diligent to put my hand towards it, when I'm diligent to fight for it, when I'm diligent to move it, come on. Because see, what you're reading here is you're reading God's vision, purpose, and goal. Deuteronomy 28 is God's vision, purpose, and goal. And when we get that vision and we make it our purpose, He'll supply that what if we know the why. Oh, man. Come on. If we know why we do what we do, He'll supply the what. He'll multiply our what for His why. That so all the nations will know that our God is God, man. Come on. Matthew 25, and I'm going to close. But you can't do all, you can't, I can't say all that without saying this. Matthew 25. Are y'all Okay. Verse 14, for it is just like a man about to go on a journey who called his own slaves and entrusted his possessions to them. 
And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, each according to his own ability. And went on his journey. Immediately the one who had received the five talents went out and traded with them and gained five more. In the same manner, the one who had received the two talents gained two more. But he who received the one talent went away and dug in the ground and hid his master's money. Now after a long time, the master of those slaves came and settled accounts with them. And y'all know the, the rest of the story. The one that gained five came and said, Master, here's your five and plus five more. Well done, well done, good, faithful slave. The one that had two came and he said, here's more. And he said, well done, good, faithful slave. Then the one who put his in the ground. Here I went and hid in the ground what you gave me. He didn't understand the principle. He didn't understand the principle. See, there's some things in your life that you've got to activate. The seed, when it goes in the ground, is activated by the moisture and the soil. The law and the order of God, when it goes, that seed goes in the ground, the moisture and the soil, it's just in there. It's just the law. It is activated by it. Your money, your gifts, they are not activated by hiding them in the ground. That's not the law and the order. Come on, man. What activates them is the principle of bearing fruit in your life. And getting in right alignment with what God did through His Son Jesus on the cross. That's when it is activated. You have here, look, you go to 24. You have His Christ coming. You have His glorious return. You have the parable of the, uh, the, the ten virgins. The parable of the fig tree. Then you have the parable, you, then you have the judgment. And in between the judgment the coming and the glorious return, he talks about living in the present right here and right now. And we have to get an understanding of what is seed and what is money, what's talents, what's the minus, our gifts. And come on, y'all hear what I'm saying? We are learning how to live in this present right now. But what we've done is we've got so caught up in His coming and the judgment, we've quit living in the present. See, Jesus doesn't want us being ignorant about life and living while we're here. See, God's law, His ideal, His intent for a seed when sown in the ground is to multiply. God wants our money to multiply. He wants the seed to multiply because He wants us to eat. He wants us to be a blessing. He wants to put us high above. What He said was, you wicked, lazy slave. You didn't do anything with what I gave you. How can I give you more? To each one that did something, it's, I like that part where he says, immediately they did something. Man, they put it into action. Come on. Jesus 
Jesus doesn't want us to be ignorant. God's law, His ideal, the seed, when sown in the ground, multiply. He supplies, it operates under the law that was spoken and it's activated when we put it in action. Does that make sense? See, the gift and the talent is activated by us. When we, we have to activate it. We can't just sit on it. The tithing is the moisture. The covenant is the soil. Come on. Our tithing becomes the moisture and the covenant is the soil. And when you mix those two together, it's going to bear fruit. That's why he said, test me in this and see if I will not bless you. Come on. God supplies seed to the farmer, but we have to get in right alignment. Both talent and seed are to multiply. Both. But one is our part, and the other is what God has already set in motion. I, I, that's so, that's, that, I don't know about y'all, but that was a revelation to me. It was like, man, when Clayton said that, he said, There's, the law is already in the ground that what you plant in it, it's going to grow. And I mean, boy, my wheels began to turn. And what I was remembering is all the times that I activated it and really didn't understand it like gravity. Amen. Come on. And I'm thinking... God, your word is so true. It doesn't return void, but it accomplishes exactly what you set out. And I just have to get myself in right alignment with it. And it works. See, he'll, he's not only called us to do something, but he says, I'll supply it. And if you'll plant it, I'll multiply it. Come on, man. Y'all stand. That, that is... Come on. Okay. I don't have a mic. Well, that's okay. It's coming. They won't be able to hear. And it's got to be on. Come on. Listen, that's just so... Man, I love the testimonies. <laughs> Thank you, Miss Ashley. Everybody give Ashley a hand. <laughs> okay, so um, several years ago, we, we were in church. We were faithfully going to church, but we were struggling financially really bad. Um, we were about to lose everything. Um, <laughs> we had TV, but it was just the Christian stations that we could watch. Hey. <laughs> and um, we had a situation where People showed up at our house. It was a good friend of ours, but there was some people that took care of it that we didn't even know. <laughs> and um, they showed up at our house with groceries, with toothpaste, with shampoo, with all of that. And it wasn't just it wasn't just what they brought. It was my favorite color toothbrush, our <laughs> brand of shampoo, our brand of toothpaste. <laughs> and I have never forgotten that. Never. I never will. Because God took care of us. And he's always taken care of us. And I'm not saying that we haven't had times of struggle since then, because Lord knows we have. But I never doubt, no matter how close to the edge we get that God's going to bring us through it because yeah. he showed me too many times. That's good. That's real good. Come on, Wade. I'm going to ask you something afterwards. Oh. <laughs> Come on, Wynn. 
I love that the multiplica multiplication doesn't just mean, it's not just money. I wrote down a while ago some of the things that when you, uh, when you're in a situation where money can't get you out of it, Come money's on. no good to you. And Man, so I've been in situations where I needed discernment for my kids. Money wasn't helping me with that. I needed, I needed, um, you know, a d wisdom to make this decision in a business deal or whatever. Money wasn't helping me with that. You know, even when you're growing through the storms of life that you're going through, you're going to be strengthened when you stand. Money can't fix that. When you're planting these things of God, it's not it's just monetary money that you're getting back. It is the peace in your life that you're getting that God it's is good. in your boat and yep. you have a covenant with Almighty God that no matter what comes, I got you. That's good. I got yep. you. It's not about money. That's right. Because I've been in situations where money wouldn't fix it. That's right. And it's not about that. But what he wants us to do, I want your soul to prosper. That's right. And it's to be whole. I want you to be, I want you to have peace. I want you to have discernment. I want you to walk in wisdom. It's all those things that he multiplies that back to us. It's not just about money. Man, you, that is so good. Yeah. <laughs> And he, and John, and I think that, wasn't it, is it Peter or John? I can't, it's in the New Testament. You'll have to look the address up. But it says, I want you to prosper as your soul prospers. Yeah. Amen. That's, right. That's what, it, and, and it's not about money. That's not what it's about at all. Because I, I guarantee you, I, I've seen a lot of rich, rich people, money couldn't fix their problems. Because they're just not tied to the covenant. I, I just, the, the revelation is that he'll give and multiply your what. Come on. Listen, no guilt, no condemnation. Let this be your revelation. You don't do just because somebody gets up here and let God reveal this to you because I'm telling you out of a cheerful heart, he says. And man, when we, when we get the revelation of that, it's going to multiply. It's going to multiply. Father, we come to you. We thank you that you do want us blessed and you do want us high above. And Lord, I know there's a lot to chew on. But Lord, when we get in right alignment that what you've already established, what you've already spoken, it is so. And Lord, we want to be a people that are in right alignment with you. Father, I love you. We thank you for everything you're doing. We can't thank you enough and grateful for your covenant. And we give you the praise and glory in Jesus' name. Come on, y'all give the Lord a hand.